Okay, so now we have finished the single subject analysis. We've looked at the uh, QC results using, for example, this. I'll just run it for a brief moment and pop it up again so we can see. And we went through this. Fantastic. Now let's finish, uh, finish this uh, series up with a group analysis. Let me uh, close these AFNI windows. So the group analysis, uh, the data is in almost the same location, uh, but I'll CD back to my home directory and start over. Uh, CD AFNI data 6, and in this case, uh, so we, we had done our single subject analysis in the FT analysis directory. FT is our subject ID. Uh, now we have some uh, basic group uh, analysis examples under group results. So CD into group results. LS. So what what you see here are we have a bunch of uh, beta weights. Normally we don't suggest bothering to do this. You can extract beta weights directly from the stats files out of the single subject results. But just for convenience we've packaged these all together. We don't need to take up extra disk space. So recall we have our 10 subjects here and uh, here we have ordinary least squares results for our subjects FP, FR, FT, etc., up to G, M. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, REMO results, 3D REMO fit. Uh, and those, those we have betas and T. So for example, 3D info dash subric info, for example, on one of the uh, OLSQ ordinary least squares results. Yeah, we see we have uh, a beta weight for visual reliable and a beta weight for auditory reliable. The coefficients, remember, uh, are the beta weights. The, the coefficient is maybe the coefficient that you multiply the uh, regressor for for each voxel, regressor by for each voxel. And then in the re uh, REMO case, we can just run this on one of the REMO results. And in this case, there are four volumes. Uh, visual reliable coefficient and auditory reliable coefficient, but they also have corresponding T stats. And the reason you might want to include the T stats there, um, one purpose of running 3D Remo fit is that you get accurate statistics at the first level, at the single subject level. So if you're going to use, for example, 3D MEMA uh, instead of 3D T test plus plus then you'll want to input the t-stats so that MEMA has the variance estimates. Um, or you could use RemoFit anyway just for the beta weights because you consider them in some sense more more robust, but uh, both of them should be reliable. Um, but anyway, that's why you may have those. So let's look at uh, running a quick t-test. In this case, uh, because we have uh, visual reliable and auditory reliable results per subject, we'll probably want to run a paired t-test. So if we look at script 5, we have uh, 3D t-test uh, plus plus uh, being run, and we have set A to be ordinary least squares FP through GM. Set B is the exact same data sets, but the volume being input in the former case for set A is visual reliable and set B it's the auditory reliable. So uh, it's just a paired t-test. We specify we want E minus B to mean visual minus auditory for our uh, main test. This was actually generated by a gen group command. If you have a lot of data sets you don't want to have to type this in and modify every line so gen group command is very good for doing that sort of thing. But so it's a it's a t test. It's a complicated uh, process. It takes a long time to run. So let's just get it started so it finishes sometime soon. And it's done. Okay. So now we have results. Let's look at that. I'll just run AFD in the current directory. Um, note the fact that we have uh, our single subject anatomy and standard space here. So that's our underlay. There's also a mask data set. I don't think we applied a mask in this, so I didn't, uh, cat s5, how do you spell 5? 
Yeah, we didn't apply any mask here, so that's fine. So if you're going to correct for multiple comparisons, say, which we aren't going to bother with right here, uh, you know, you would want to include a mask, or at least run the group uh, result to look at the result and see if there are any artifacts outside the brain, and then mask it. But let's, we can run AFNI here and use our single subject in that as the underlay. There's Allison. Hi, Allison. So I'll set the overlay to be the uh, stat.5 t-test result. And we don't expect anything too amazing here, but uh, the results should be should be uh, visible because remember these uh, these stimuli were so clear. So every subject should have pretty good results. I think across subjects there were some even across each subject's runs there were maybe some distortion issues. So these results could actually be stronger if the uh, if the acquisition were um, better that way. But uh, let's just go for the contrast right away. So we can look at visual reliable minus auditory reliable. Uh, we'll set the overlay to be the mean and the threshold to be the t-stat. So we're looking at the uh, effect size here or the contrast of the effect sizes th in this case. And we'll threshold on the t-stat. So let's just be slightly standard here. I'll right click on threshold and I'll set p equals 0.001. And let's just see what survives at that. That might be a little high for only 10 subjects, but let's just very quickly see. I'll, I'll set that threshold. I'll clusterize and set. I won't do anything special here and hit the report. We get four clusters. That's comforting. That one is probably not one. Oh, that's just a tiny one left in the visual area. Auditory, auditory, visual. So we only get tiny clusters left in the visual area. So that's pretty pretty strict for only 10 subjects. So let's drop that on to, uh, okay, I'm going to right click and set a p-value. Let's just say 0 0.005. Good enough. And what is our, uh, oops, I didn't have to do that. What does our cluster report say now? So let's just see what remains here. I'll just peek around. Some visual cluster, another one, auditory, auditory. Well, that's great. Our top four clusters are probably what we would expect. And this one looks like the vis this visual cluster broke into two pieces. So, but again, this is a, again, this is a fairly strict uh, threshold for only 10 subjects. That's not a lot of subjects. The degrees of freedom uh, that give you strong statistics at the individual subject level, uh, you know, we had 400, 450 time points. We saw, you know, the, the, the T and F stats were pretty large at the single subject level from 450 time points and uh, a lot of explained variants. Here, even if we explain a lot of variants, there are only 10 subjects. That's starting with 10, 10 degrees of freedom and then going down for your number of tests and comparisons you're making. So uh, you expect these to be a little weak, weaker. But still, we're seeing what we hope to see. I can drop that lower just to make it prettier. OK, so uh, what do we see in these results? Again, this is a paired t-test, so if it's visual reliable minus auditory reliable, say at uh, some voxel here, we have a, a mean of 0.68. The, the difference in the means is 0.68. Of course, if we peek around, we have the visual mean as 0.81, and the auditory reliable mean is 0.12, say, and their difference is 0.68. Wonderful. So. So that's great. Um, there's not uh, there's not too much to do here that we haven't done at the first level. Uh, we, you can generate clusters from this. You can save a cluster table. You can uh, if you click on the 3D cluster command, it it gives you a 3D clusterized command that you could run to generate these results. Uh, but I think uh, Paul's probably demonstrating some of the clusterized uh, features, so I don't really need to spend time with that. So. I'm going to let it go with here. This is our group result, and uh, hopefully we'll get a Nobel Prize from this. I'm sure we will.